Hello friends, this video on induction part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. In this video, we will study deduction and induction, principle of mathematical induction and some problems on induction. What is deduction? Deduction, when we go from generalization to specific instance, we call deduction. Let me take some examples to clear this. Example, we have two general statements, Rohit is a man and all men eat food. So with these two general statements, we got a specific statement that Rohit eats food. Let's take one more example. We will say Mukesh is an engineer. This is a general statement. All engineers earn good money is again a general statement. You combine these two statements as Mukesh is an engineer and all engineers earn good money. We conclude that Mukesh earns good money. So this is a specific statement and these two are general statement. We can take one more example. Sun is a star is a general statement. All stars have their own light is a general statement. We combine these two statements to get a specific statement that sun has its own light. So what we have seen this in these examples, we got general statement. We combine general statement to get specific statement. And this is called deduction, where from general statement we come to specific instance. Now let's understand induction. Induction is just reverse of deduction. In induction we have specific instance, from there we get the generalization. For example, we say Rohit eats food, Vikash eats food and Rohit, Vikash and Vikas are men. So from these statements, there is a specific instance of statement. From these statements, we can give a generalized statement that all men eat food. If we go by this approach, this is called induction. In mathematical term, if a statement is true for n is equal to 1, if a function fx is equal to let's suppose x square plus 2x plus 3, something like this, if this is true for n is equal to 1, and n is equal to k, and n is equal to k plus 1, that means this statement is true for all. In, in the mathematical term, when you say induction, that means if a statement is true for n is equal to 1, if a statement is true for n is equal to k and also k plus 1, that means the statement is true for all, all values of n. In the general scenario, we have, we take specific instance and we convert to a generalized general instance. This is called induction. We we'll see these two figures to get our concept clear. So here if we say that n is equal to 1, let's suppose this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, 5, this is some, some arrangement. So if we say that this is true for this, this one, first one, and this is true for any two, we pick any two, n is equal to k and k plus 1. If this arrangement is true for first and true for any two value in this, that then the arrangement is true for any values, the, the whole arrangement is true. Such kind of concept, such kind of reduction is called induction, wherein we say that it is true for 1, it is true for k and k plus 1 and then it is true for all the values of n. You take n, any value of n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this is true. Here this is a diagram which explains both induction and reduction. So if we have a general principle like Rohit is a man, all men eat food, from this we get a specific instance, for example Rohit eats food, this is called deductive approach. Whereas inductive approach is the other way around approach where we say specific instance like Rohit eats food, Vikas eats food or Rohit and Vikas are men because these are specific to Rohit and Vikas. If you see these statements are specific to Rohit and Vikas. Rohit eats food, Rohit is men, Vikas eats food, Vikas is men. This is specific to Vikas and Rohit. From this we get a general principle that all men eat food. This is, these states are independent of Rohit and Vikas. Correct? So that is called inductive approach. In our chapter we will focus more on inductive approach. Since we wanted to clear your concept between induction and induction, so we gave an introduction on deduction, but actually we will focus on induction where we will have specific instance and from those specific instance we will create a general principle. For example, Rohit eats food, Vikas eats food, Rohit and Vikas are men. These are all specific instances to Rohit and Vikas because 
in all this we have Rohit and Vikas and from this we get a specific instance that all may need food. In mathematical term we will prove that the specific instance that is n is equal to 1 k and k plus 1 the statement is true for these specific instance and we will induce and will found that this statement is true for all values of n. This is what we do in induction. In deduction, if it is true for all the value of L, and we say that this is also true for n is equal to 1 and k and 1, k plus 1. But in case of induction, we say if it is true for n is equal to 1, k and k plus 1, that means it is true for all values of L. This is the difference between induction and deduction. But in our chapter, we will focus more on induction. So let's concentrate more on induction where we say the statement is true for n is equal to 1, k and k plus 1. That means statement is true for n is equal to all. All values of n, the statement is true and thus we get a general principle. Now let's see the principle of mathematical induction in mathematics. For a statement p1 involving a national number n, if p1 is true, pk is true and pk1, pk plus 1 is true, then the statement is true for all values of n. So then this statement is true for all values of n. So what we do, we, we, we find first p1, if it is true in p1, we assume that pk1 is true, this is assumed. So with this assumption, we try to prove that pk1 is also true. So if we are able to prove these three, then we say that pn is true for all values of n. Let's take for example, so we have to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus this till n is equal to n plus n into n plus 1 by 2. Let's say pn, pn is equal to 1 here because we are taking only 1 LHS. RHS is equal to 1 into 1 plus 1 that is 2 by 2 that is equal to 1. That means this statement is true for p is 1. Let's assume pk is true. So pk is equal to, we'll assume that 1 plus 2 plus 3 dash dash 2 k is equal to k into k plus 1 by 2. That is we assume, this is a statement 1, we assume that this is true. So now we will find pk plus 1. So pk plus 1, this becomes 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus k plus k plus 1. Till this point 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 till k we can write as k into k plus 1 by 2 because we have assumed that this is true for this is correct. On top of this, we will say k plus n. We will add this. So, this will become k plus 1 common into k by 2 plus 1. So, this become k plus 1 into k plus 2 by 2. So, if you see p k 1 k plus 1 should be k plus 1 k plus 2 by 2 is correct. Because now if we say k plus 1 is equal to n, this becomes n into n plus 1 by 2. So that means pk1 k plus 1 is correct so after assuming that pk is correct. So we have assumed pk is correct. So we when you assume pk is correct, we have got this equation that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 till k is equal to k plus 1, k into k plus 1 by 2. We have to prove that k, pk plus 1 is correct. So p k plus 1 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 till k plus 1. We have taken this box because this thing we already know the value that is k into k plus 1 by 2 we have got from equation 1 plus k plus 1 extra we have. So we have now solved this we took k plus 1 common we got this as k plus 1 into k plus 2 by 2. Actually this should be k plus 1 n is equal to k plus 1 n plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 by 2. So we have proved that this is equal to this. That means this statement is true. We have proved this using induction. Now we have to prove that 2 to the power n is greater than n for all positive i using induction. So we'll say we'll say n is equal to 1. When you say n is equal to 1, 2 to the power n become 2 to the power 1 is equal to 2. And RHS, this is LHS, and RHS is n, n is equal to 1. So we see LHS is greater than RHS. Proof. 
That means for n is equal to 1, this is correct. For n is equal to k, we have LHS is equal to 2 to the power k and RHS is equal to k. So we have got that 2 to the power k is equal to k plus c because 2 to the power k is greater than k. So we can also say, see if we have 2 to the power k greater than k, we can say 2 to the power k is equal to k plus c. Because we have a is greater than b, we can say a is equal to b plus c. c is some constant. So this is the equation 1 we have got. Then we have assumed that n is equal to k is correct. Now for n is equal to k plus 1, we have 2 to the power k plus 1. 2 to the power k plus 1 is nothing but 2 into 2 to the power k. And 2 to the power k we can write from this equation that becomes 2 into k plus c k plus c some constant so this becomes 2k plus 2c correct and that is k plus k plus 2c this is c now k plus k plus 2c is always we can write greater than k plus 1 why because k plus k if you see since n is all positive number this k is all positive number so we can say this is k plus 1 plus k minus 1 plus 2 c correct so now we have supposed to take k plus 1 and this will always be constant because constant plus some constant is always constant so this will become k plus 1 plus c so k plus 1 plus c is always greater than k plus 1 so we can prove that here 2k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1 so we have proved this statement is true from n is equal to k plus 1 n is equal to 1 it is true we have assumed n is equal to k is true and we have proved that the statement is true for n is equal to k plus 1 thus we can say that 2 to the power n is greater than n is valid for all values of n let's repeat what we have done we have proved this statement is true for n is equal to 1 we have assumed that this statement is true for n is equal to k and then we have proved that this statement is true for n is equal to k plus 1. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online test, get the best quality study material, study from the best tutor and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.